Hello and welcome back to Rust 101. This is video 43 and we are deep into unsafe Rust. Uh, and today we're going to talk about uh, what the word unsafe means when you write it in Rust code. And um, uh, as you may have noticed, I've been using some slides written by Tweety Golf. Thank you very much for those slides um, for most of, for all of these videos uh, and the exercises written by them. So uh, it's awesome that I can use this freely available uh, open resource to make these videos. Um, but this is the first time I felt the need to make my own slides uh, to try and uh, um, uh, explain this point because I think there's some there's a really critical thing that uh, uh, many people who are explaining unsafe rust know, but they don't kind of pick out explicitly. So I want to be really really explicit with you that the word unsafe in rust has two totally separate meanings uh, depending where it's used. So sometimes when you write unsafe in Rust, you're saying to the programmer who's using your stuff, you must read my documentation comments and you must follow the rules that I'm giving you. Um, so you're, it's like a warning sign saying, um, this piece of code won't always be correct if you don't use it correctly. Or rather, this piece of code, will, you, you will not have correct code unless you use this piece of code correctly. Uh, so in most of Rust, when you call a function or something like that, you know for sure that all the rules around references that we talked around last time will just automatically be followed. So all your references will be valid. There will be no undefined behavior, which we'll get onto uh, in the next video. Um, everything will work how you would expect and how it should. But if you put the word unsafe uh, on your function or your trait, what you're saying is... Uh, things will not be okay for you if you use this code without reading the docs and following the rules I'm going to give you. So that's the first meaning. It's a warning sign. You must read the docs. And then the other place where we use the word unsafe is almost the opposite or the converse. Um, and it's saying, it's saying to the compiler, so not talking to the programmer now, talking to the compiler and saying, I promise I did read the docs and I have followed the rules. So we need to be super clear which of those two meanings um, we're talking about um, when we use the word unsafe in our code or when we read the word unsafe in other people's code. It's either a big warning sign saying, please read the docs, otherwise things are going to go badly wrong. Or it's a promise saying, I did read the docs that someone else wrote um, and I followed all the rules and that's why I know that this code is safe. So in a way, the second meaning you could have another keyword in Rust called safe, or I promise this is safe, or something like that. Um, but you use the same keyword for both. And I mean, like, programming languages are conservative about how, about introducing keywords, right? So, um, uh, like, I understand why there's only one keyword for this, but it, the, it's critically important to understand it has these two meanings. Either a warning sign to say, read the docs, or a promise to say, yes, I did read the docs, um, and I followed the rules. So here's what it's going to look like when you're giving your warning. Um, if you, if you're making a function, which people have to be careful when they use, um, because there are certain, um, important rules they must follow that are not enforced by the compiler, then we write unsafe fun and then our function name. And what this means is that they're not allowed to use this function without themselves writing unsafe to say, I promise I read the docs, right? Uh, that's the kind of effect on the compiler. But the effect on the human is to say, you must read and understand what I wrote about how to be safe when you use this function. And then exactly the same thing for a trait. If you have a trait that it's unsafe to use um, unless you read the docs and follow the rules, then you write unsafe trait instead of just trait. So that's how you give a warning and say, please read my documentation. Um, and here is how you... You say, I have read the documentation. So I promise I read the docs and I followed the rules. Um, and then you write the word unsafe. And it, it's slightly hidden in, in this bit of code. But here, this is an example of um, something awful that you should never do, which is we say, um, we say, uh, yes, I have read all the docs and I am following all the rules. That's what this unsafe means. And then in here, we don't follow the rules, right? We set up a pointer, which is null, which is a zero. And then we return this reference, which is a reference for U8, um, except it is it is null, and that's not allowed. So this reference is invalid, so that all the rules are broken. Undefined behavior might happen, which is uh, terrible, and will break everything. 
and it's unpredictable and could cause crashes and so on. So this this is a great example of what you should not do. But uh, the point here is that the word unsafe here means I have followed the rules. You can trust me, compiler. Um, and if it concerns you that it's so easy to tell the compiler, actually don't follow the rules and everything, let everything go wrong, um, then I guess we could say, yeah, uh, that is concerning. But the, the, the enormous benefit of Rust is that if you have crashes or problems that happen, um, you can focus your investigation on these unsafe blocks, these places where, where we promised to follow the rules and try and figure out how we didn't follow the rules somehow. Okay, and same kind of thing for if someone has an unsafe trait. So if this my type was, was declared as unsafe, sorry, uh, if this send is declared as unsafe, then we can implement that trait um, by saying, yep, I've read the rules and I'm okay with implementing this. The, you know, the, this, this is an okay trait for me to implement um, because I've read and understood the, the documentation and I'm following the rules. Um, there are some other examples as well. For example, if you want to access the fields of a union, a union is a type that um, has some unsafe things around it. Okay, so they, um, basically those are the two types, right? Either um, careful, you must follow the rules, or I promise I followed the rules. Um, and I think it's absolutely it is surprising and new and different um, that in this little corner of Rust, the unsafe corner, the documentation is absolutely critical. So documentation is always really great and helpful, especially when it's correct. Um, but in unsafe code, it's absolutely vital because if you declare your function unsafe, um, what you're saying is read the docs and follow the rules. Um, so this is an example that this is in the standard library, this um, uh, struct called non-zero. Uh, and it, it's actually, it's uh, templated on a type. So I missed out some details here, but basically uh, uh, it's a, it's a, a number of some kind that is is guaranteed to be non-zero. And the way it's guaranteed to be non-zero is there's a constructor called new which checks whether it's zero and um, returns an error if it's not. But there's also this constructor called new unchecked. And new unchecked is unsafe. And the reason why new unchecked is unsafe is because it doesn't check whether the value that you passed in is zero. Instead, it says to you, you must check. So every time you write unsafe on your function, you also need to document, and it's, or normally you put a section like this that says safety, and then you have to say what rules the program has to follow to use this function and for it to be safe. And in this case, it's really, really simple. Um, this n must not be zero. Um, and if it is zero, unpredictable things will happen when you use non-zero because non-zero works in an environment where it knows it can assume that this, this number was not zero. Um, so yeah, the uh, this is the the warning sign style of unsafe saying um, if you call new unchecked, you must have manually checked that your value is not zero, uh, and that's why it's unsafe because there's a requirement on the programmer to read the documentation and follow the rules. So that's when you're setting up your warning signs. You've got to say what rules the programmer must follow. Um, but then here's an example of using uh, non-zero. In this case, it's a non-zero u size. Uh, which is just like one of the types of non-zero. Um, and so you can see we're calling new unchecked, which is the, the um, constructor that we just looked at on the last slide, and we're passing in the value 20, so it's not zero. And so we're okay to call this function. So we wrap it in unsafe to say, yes, I have read the rules and I'm following them. And critically, uh, even though this is not enforced by the compiler, every time we use an unsafe block, uh, you really need to write a little comment saying the reason why this is okay is because I have followed the rules and here's how I followed the rules. In this case, it's quite straightforward to say, look, I followed the rules because 20 is not zero, right? So um, uh, the rule was it mustn't be zero. It's not zero. I followed the rules. So in this case, um, it's pretty straightforward to explain why we followed the rules, but that's not always the case. You know, it's, most of this stuff is going to be about pointers and references. So you need to, you might need to write something about how um, you know that this pointer is valid because of blah, blah, blah. So you might you need to explain that you've read and understood the rules and you've followed them. And it, in, surprisingly, it's all about the documentation. Um, so if you declare a function as unsafe and you don't explain how to use it safely, 
uh, then it's actually impossible to use, right? Because you've you've said you must read the docs and follow the rules, and you haven't provided the rules, so how can anyone use it? Um, but then also in this case, this is like a convention that I strongly recommend you follow, which is that when you use some unsafe code, you must explain that you've understood the rules and you followed them. The reason why that's so critically important is because if your program crashes in the future, um, some because someone somewhere has not followed the rules correctly, then these pieces of code, these un these things where you've declared unsafe because I followed the rules, those are going to be the bits you're going to need to read and understand, or someone else is going to need to uh, read and understand to check. Did I really follow the rules? Did I make a mistake? So you need to explain um, for your future self or someone else um, what your understanding of the rules was and why you think you followed them, and that will give the person a massive head start on figuring out, oh, actually, they missed the fact that this um, situation could happen, or that this rule also applied in this case. Um, so you've got to explain. You, you've got to, in my mind, got to, like, you know, do what you like. But um, I, I really want to encourage you that because you're replacing the compiler, you need to explain your thinking, because normally the compiler does this thinking for you. And that's it for this video. This, this was just, uh, what does unsafe mean? Next, we're going to do we're going to do a brief interlude into what is undefined behavior, like what I guess why we would want to avoid it, uh, why it, why it happens in un, uh, in if you use unsafe code incorrectly, uh, and then we'll go on to some examples of what unsafe code looks like in in practice. So, hope you enjoyed. See you next time.